What's going on guys, Arrow here, and welcome back to another video. Now, in today's video, we're going to be talking about everything there is to know about breeding inside of Pokemon Scarlet and Pokemon Violet. Now, breeding for me was always something that was a little bit difficult to understand because there's so many items that people talk about, so many little different mechanics and things that go into it, and I feel like it's always kind of overwhelming and confusing for people to understand. So in this video, I'm going to try to keep it short, but also really detailed and try to explain everything in the best way possible. So breeding in Pokemon is the process of two Pokemon producing eggs. And in every Pokemon game, this used to be done at the daycare center where you would leave two Pokemon there and you would be able to find eggs and gather them in order to hatch Pokemon. But with the open world games of Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, the daycare has been removed from these games and is no longer a part of them. So how exactly do the eggs work and where do you get them? That is all now done through this brand new picnic feature. So picnics are like basically having portable daycares where you and two Pokemon could start up a picnic together and then if you look in the basket, you'll be able to collect eggs. So the way that you could do this is like if I have a male Ampharos and a female Ampharos, I start up a picnic with them together. After a little bit, I look in the basket, I'm going to find some eggs and inside those eggs are going to hatch into baby Mareeps. Now that might seem very time consuming to have to find two of every Pokemon so that you can put them together in order to make babies, but fortunately Pokemon also has something called egg groups. Now I'll have this website linked below in the description if you guys want to check it out for yourself, but we can take a look over here and see all of the egg groups that come inside of Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. So you've got like monster, fairy, grass, bug and flying, pretty much any of these you can just click on and it'll show you all of the Pokemon that are a part of this egg group. So for example, in this egg group of grass, we've got Hoppip in here, we've got Sunkern, Bounceweed, Smoliv. So all of these Pokemon can actually be bred with each other because they are a part of the same egg group. Now the way that this works is whatever the female Pokemon is that you decide to breed, that is what the baby is going to be. So for example, if we're using like Smoliv right here, if I take a Dollar for example, which is always going to be female, and I decide to breed it with like a male skip bloom for example if i hatch them the eggs are all going to be baby small lives now this also might seem tedious but fortunately there is an ultimate method that pretty much everybody likes to use and that is using the pokemon ditto so Ditto is basically like the universal breeder of all Pokemon. You can even leave a Ditto with a Pokemon like Bronzong which doesn't have a gender and you'll still be able to hatch baby Bronzor eggs. Now if you're wondering how you can catch your own Ditto, I've already made a guide about how you can get one inside of Pokemon Scarlet and Violet so you can click the little eye up in the corner right now if you want to go and watch it. So now that we've covered all of that, let's talk about the process of actually making eggs and that happens when you take two compatible Pokemon and start up a picnic with them. Now the better way to do this is also to use this new sandwich feature which is a part of Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. You'll actually be able to find sandwiches that have an ability called egg power and this is going to make it so that you can produce eggs even faster. Now the cool thing is when you do start a picnic like this with two compatible Pokemon, you don't even have to be like really doing anything in the game, you could just leave it on in AFK and you'll start to see that eggs are going to gather inside of the basket. Now the total number of eggs that can cap inside of the basket is 10, so once it reaches 10 eggs you're going to have to go over there, collect all of them, put them into your party or put them into your boxes and then you have to wait again for more eggs to appear. So now that you know how to obtain eggs, let's talk about how you can make the eggs hatch really fast. Now in order to hatch the eggs, you just put the eggs inside of your party and then you just run around in the world, especially on your Coridon or Maridon, and that should be able to make the eggs hatch pretty quickly. But a trick that a lot of people don't know is that if you actually put a Pokemon with the ability Flame Body inside of your party, it's going to make your eggs hatch even faster. So a good example to use for this is Flechinder. That's a Pokemon that I like to use that comes with the ability Flame Body, but if you know any other Pokemon, I'll put some up on screen right now. If you have any of these Pokemon and they do have the ability Flame Body, definitely put one of these in your party while you're hatching eggs and it'll go much faster. All right, now let's get into the more tricky stuff that's a little bit harder to explain. And the first thing that we're going to talk about are natures. Now, every single Pokemon comes with its own unique nature. And in doing that, there's going to be a stat that gets increased, but also a stat that's going to be sacrificed. So basically, the way that it works here is like, for example, a Pokemon like Garchomp could be a really good Pokemon if it has an adamant nature, which basically increases its attack, but decreases its special attack. Now, as a Garchomp, you're not really going to be teaching a special moves like Dragon Pulse or anything like that, but instead, you're going to be teaching it hard hitting physical attacking moves like earthquake and dragon claw and stuff like that so having a higher attack stat is much better and you can totally sacrifice special attack for it this chart here will show you what all of the natures increase but also what all of them decrease so you'll be able to know exactly which ones that you want 
So the trick with this inbreeding is using an item known as an Everstone. Now an Everstone you can buy pretty easily by just going to the Deli Bird Delights Market that's inside of Mezagaza or the city that's inside of the game. Uh, you might have to progress a little bit to be able to get it, but you can buy it for a relatively cheap price of 3000 But once you have this item, if you give this item to hold for one of your parent Pokemon, that parent's nature is 100% going to be passed on to every baby that hatches out of the eggs. So for example, if I have a female Garchomp that has an adamant nature, and then I have a male Garchomp which has a modest nature, if I give the female one an Everstone to hold, every single baby Gibble that hatches from the eggs is going to have an adamant nature. And this will work for egg group Pokemon and even Ditto. So if I have a modest Garchomp and then I have an adamant Ditto, if I give the Ditto an Everstone to hold and hatch all of the eggs, every single baby Gibble is still going to be an adamant nature. By far the most confusing thing for beginner breeders to understand is what they mean by IVs and EVs. Like what is an IV? What is an EV? Are you talking about this one? What exactly does it mean? So in order to explain it simply, every single stat on your Pokemon that you see right here has its own IV value. Now they don't really tell you specifically what the IV value is, but that number could be anywhere from 0 to 31. That's how it goes for every single stat and for every single Pokemon. It's always going to be from either 0 to 31. 31 is the highest and 0 is the lowest. Now, if you've beaten Pokemon Scarlet and Violet and you've seen the credits, then after talking to Nurse Joy, you're going to be able to unlock the Judge function, which will allow you to go into the boxes or the party of your Pokemon and be able to press the plus button to be able to judge and kind of see exactly how your stats are for your Pokemon. And in doing that, you're going to see like these different describing words like pretty good or decent or best and anything like that. And you're not really going to know exactly what this means. However, it does give you kind of a hint for what the IVs are like on your Pokemon. So you can match up those description words with the chart over here to kind of get an idea for exactly what these stats might be for your Pokemon. But obviously the one that we're trying to go for is 31 because having 31 IVs for your stat is the most important one to have because that means it is the best possible Pokemon that it can be. And IVs can be very, very important because let's say for example, we have two Haxorus, they're both level 100 and they both know the same attacks. But one of these Haxorus has maxed out IVs and has 31 in all of its stats, but the other one has really low IVs in all of its stats. The one that has maxed out IVs and has 31 is always going to go first and hit harder than the one that has low IVs, even though that they're exactly the same level and they pretty much are identical, just because the one has perfect IVs, it's always going to be harder hitting and it's going to have faster speed. So because of that, you can kind of see how important this is in terms of competitive play. Obviously, you're going to want to try to have the best possible IVs that you can get for all of your Pokemon. EVs on the other hand are stat points that you get to give to your Pokemon depending on how you train it and I think for every single Pokemon you get about 510 EVs and depending on which Pokemon you decide to make your Pokemon fight against you're going to get different types of EVs for it. So for example if you have a Pokemon like Gengar you're really going to want to try to battle against Pokemon that give speed IVs because that is going to raise Gengar's speed a lot and then you also want to make it battle against Pokemon that will raise its special attack EVs so that'll make sure that its special attack is going to hit really hard. And so depending on what Pokemon you decide to make it battle and how you EV train your Pokemon, you could decide to make it more tanky or more bulky or have more offensive stats. And that pretty much kind of works in terms of its EVs. And that's pretty cool too because the items that you get throughout the game like Carbos and Protein, those are also used for raising EVs. So if you get a bottle of Protein and it says it'll raise the attack stat, you're basically giving attack EVs to your Pokemon. So if IVs are something that a Pokemon is born with, how can I make sure that my newly hatched Pokemon has the best possible IVs that it can get? Now for that, we're going to be using an item known as a Destiny Knot, and you can also purchase this from the Deli Bird Shop inside of Mesa Gaza. If you give one of the parent Pokemon a Destiny Knot to hold, it is randomly going to select 5 IVs from either of the parents and give them to the baby. So you might be able to see where this is going. If you have two parents that have maxed out IVs or like a six IV ditto, and then also a parent that has six IVs, if you give one of them a destiny knot, then that means five of the six IVs for the next Pokemon that is gonna be hatched out of the eggs are all gonna have perfect IVs. So for this example, let's say that we're doing this with a Gengar and also a Ditto. If I decide to give one of these a Destiny Knot, it is going to randomly select five of these IVs to give to the Baby Ghastly. And for example, here you can see that it pretty much selected this from HP, this from the Attack Stat, this from the Defense, this from the Special Defense, and this from the Speed. Now you can see here the one that it didn't select was Special Attack. So this would be like very bad luck right here because it randomly selects five using the Destiny Knot. You can't really make it ever pass all six of them. It is possible 
to get six perfect IVs by breeding, but it does also come with a little bit of luck. So doing that can also be kind of bad because for a Pokemon like Ghastly, special attack is very crucial. So you're going to want to have perfect IVs for that stat. But fortunately, there is a way to make sure that you can pass on a certain IV guaranteed to every single baby. Now for this, we're going to be using the power items, which you can also buy from the Deli Bird shop. And every single one of these power items is going to specialize in a certain stat. So for example, we've got the power anklet for speed. We've got the power band for special defense, the power belt for defense, the power bracer for attack, the power lens for special attack, and the power weight for HP. If you give one of your parent Pokemon one of these items to hold, then that corresponding stat is always going to be passed on to the baby 100% in terms of its IVs. So if you have like perfect IVs in special attack and you give the power lens to that Pokemon, every single baby is 100% guaranteed to have maxed out IVs in its special attack stat. Now let's talk about Pokeball breeding. So depending on which two parent Pokemon that you decide to put into the picnic to hatch eggs, you can actually pass on certain Pokeballs into the baby Pokemon, which is also something that's a little bit cool. So for example, let's say that we have a Ditto that is just caught in a normal Pokeball, and then I have a Garchomp, which is caught in a Quick Ball. And the Garchomp, this is just what I'm using for the example. It could also be a female Pokemon, it could be a male Pokemon, even a genderless Pokemon like Bronzong. It doesn't really matter. If I have these two Pokemon together in the picnic, then that means that whatever the parent Pokemon Pokemon is in terms of its female or male or genderless, whatever Pokeball that that Pokemon is breeding it with the ditto, that is the same Pokeball that all of the babies are going to have. So for example, if I have this Garchomp which was caught in a Quick Ball, then every single Gibble that is going to hatch out of the eggs is going to be inside of a Quick Ball. Now let's say I had a male Garchomp which was caught in an Ultra Ball and then also a female Garchomp which was caught in a Dusk Ball. Doing this, the baby Gibbles are actually going to have a 50-50 chance of inheriting either ball. And finally, if you're doing this with egg group Pokemon, it's whatever the female Pokemon's ball is that the babies are going to have. So for example, if I have a male Haxorus, which was caught in a Pokeball, and a female Garchomp, which was caught in an Ultra Ball, every single baby Gibble is still going to be in an Ultra Ball. Now you can pretty much do this with every single Pokeball except for three of them, which is the Cherish Ball that you can get inside of events, the Master Ball, the ultimate one that you can only get once, and then the Hisui Ball. Once the Pokemon Legends Arceus update comes out and Hisui and Pokemon can be transferred over, I'm guessing that all of those are just going to turn in to normal Pokeballs. Alright, now let's move into hidden abilities. Every single Pokemon has its own hidden ability, and most of the time these hidden abilities are way more powerful than the default abilities that this Pokemon comes with. So for example, a Pokemon like Quaxly has the normal ability Torrent, but its hidden ability is Moxie, which is a way more broken ability to have because Moxie, every time you knock out a Pokemon, the Pokemon's attack stat is going to go up, which is definitely really good to have on Quaxly. So that would be something that I would really want to try to have. Now you can't just find Pokemon with their hidden abilities out in the wild, but instead the best way to get them is actually doing the Terra Raid Battles, where the Pokemon that you catch from Terra Raid Battles actually do have a pretty good chance of having their hidden ability. Now the way that it works to pass these abilities through breeding is for example, let's say that I have a Ditto, and then I have a Quankavol that's either male or female, or even a genderless Pokemon that has its hidden ability Moxie, then that means all of the baby Quanxleys that are going to hatch have a 60% chance of having the hidden ability. If I have a male Quankavol and a female Quankavol, both with their hidden abilities, there's also a 60% chance that all of the Quanxleys are going to have their hidden abilities. And finally, it also works with females, where if I have a male Quankavol that doesn't have its hidden ability, but a female Quankavol that does, it still means that all of the baby Quanxleys are going to have a 60% chance of having Moxie. And finally, the last thing that we're going to take a look at here are egg moves, and these are pretty much moves that a Pokemon can only learn through breeding. So for example, we're going to be using Dreepy here, where if I scroll all the way to the bottom here on Bulbapedia, it's going to show me moves that it can only learn by breeding. So in Generation 9, these moves are Confuse Ray, Curse, Disable, Double Team, Dragon Tail, Sucker Punch, and you're going to notice that a lot of times, some Pokemon might have some really, really good egg moves that you might want to have in terms of their final move sets. And even for a Pokemon here like Dragapult, a strong, hard-hitting, physical attacking move like Sucker Punch that also gets priority, that will be a pretty good move to have on a Dragapult. So how do you get these types of moves to appear on your baby Pokemon? Shout out to Matt here for discovering this on Twitter, but it seems like here that to share egg moves from another Pokemon, the target Pokemon needs to be holding 
holding an item known as a mirror herb and it says here that this is even possible for pokemon of different species and egg groups so for example an egg move that grookey can learn is fake out and we've got a hariyama here with fake out that can be able to give that move to a grookey despite them being in completely different egg groups so you can pretty much give the grookey a mirror herb to hold and as long as the hariyama knows the move fake out the eggs that hatch from the grookey are also all going to have that move fake out so that is really really cool but yeah there you go guys that is pretty much everything there is to know about breeding inside of pokemon scarlet and pokemon violet i hope this video helped you guys out i tried my hardest to make it as easy to understand as possible if you guys enjoyed the video then definitely be sure to click that like button and also comment down below and let me know what you guys think about all of this how are you guys feeling about breeding inside of these games are you going to be breeding a lot definitely be sure to comment down below and let me know if you're new to this channel, then please be sure to subscribe. I'm definitely going to have some more Pokemon content, so definitely be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on that. Click on that bell to become a part of the notification squad. Go follow me on Twitter at actual arrow so you can be featured in videos. And also join my Discord server as well. We've got a bunch of people in there who are always talking about Pokemon and Smash Bros and Nintendo. So definitely be sure to join that. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Thank you so much for watching.